one of the most impactful situations, which unfortunately we've come across more than once, is when a vehicle pulls up with a panicked driver because they've got somebody unwell in the back who's taken an overdose. And unfortunately, when we unload the department and do the patient and do everything we can, we find that unfortunately they've already passed away and they're dead and there is nothing more we can do for them. I think the situation I remember most in my career in substance use services was in 2011. And I was a drugs worker in Swansea. The male was already not breathing, so we quickly assessed the area and started CPR myself while a colleague drew up the first one hit kit. Uh, it's quite distressing. It took a while for the individual to show any signs of breathing. Um, and I think we were on four or five kits before he opened his eyes. Um emotionally impact for me as an A&E doctor mostly hits me after the scenario. However, you always are aware of that this is somebody's family member. This is somebody who is cared about and loved and afterwards that catches up to us and we do have to think about and talk about that when it affects us. If somebody has had an overdose, you know, those next few days and weeks are absolutely key to get them engaged with treatment and to use that teachable moment to help them understand that help is available to them need to do is to be out there on the streets, in the communities, targeting, finding the right people to get them into treatment so we can save even more lives. We're trying to do as much as possible. I think the key thing that we're, everything we're doing, um, we're doing in partnership, we've got really strong partnerships across our health board and in fact partnering up with, with other neighbour health boards. Um, David Palace Police are a particularly strong um, partner as are our three local authorities. Um, and housing organisations such as the Wallet are absolutely key as well. We've got an ongoing Spike on a Bike initiative which uh, enables us to react quickly to naloxone requests uh, for training or when we complete initial assessments for um, opiate dependent individuals accessing treatment where we can reduce the risks immediately by servicing Spike on a Bike orders and getting those orders out even to extra rural locations and across, especially Ceredigion. We are proactively uh, dispensing naloxone through our needle syringe programme uh, to our service users, to concerned others, uh, and through people that present to a needle syringe programme actually dispensing more kits than we need to get out to those individuals in our communities who aren't engaging in our services. So uh, the secondary distribution is really important. The importance of naloxone is huge. Um, it'll keep you breathing, it'll start you breathing if your breathing may have slowed due to the use of an opioid medication or of an overuse of that. Small, it's easy to carry around and it should be something that not only medical professionals have access to, anybody who has somebody who's a potential drug user or who is near and dear to anyone who might be a potential drug user or who may come in contact with one should be able to use it and confident to use it and happy to use it. It will save lives. We trained 44 police volunteers to carry Nixide in the uh, first aid packs and that rollout project saved the lives of two individuals in Carmarthenshire uh, and we've recently uh, heard uh, that it's going to be rolled out force wide. I think some of the big, biggest challenges we're facing around um, overdoses um, or drug use and misuse, people don't feel like they can talk about it because they fear of what they might lose. So I think that's the biggest problem around it is the stigma around it. You know, removing that stigma that it's not a weakness to come in and ask for help to our services because we've got experts and professionals there who really want to help you. To reduce stigma, I think we just all need to start talking about it more, talking about it education so that we know what overdose looks like, what drug use looks like, that it isn't only what we have in our brain as classic, that 
image that it can be any of us. It can be the person you know very well or you think you know very well. Uh, the one piece of advice I'd give someone at risk of overdose is just please don't be afraid to reach out and tell someone that you're using. There may be a, quite a lot of people around who wouldn't want to hear that or know, but there are a lot of people around who won't judge and will have the time and the opportunity to keep you safe and to give you access to what you need. Um, my one promise to improve things around overdose and substance misuse is to talk about it. To talk about it, to try and, and normalise it so that it's not something that's in the shadows anymore. My one promise is that we simply won't stop. We will keep working to find innovative ways um, to help and support people um, with their substance use and to ensure that no door is ever closed on any individual.